I mean, pay back for the cook. I want to pay. <laughs> One dollar any size soft drinks are always one dollar. Only on the McDonald's one to three dollar menu. Leads the team with 19 chances created this calendar year. Also shares the lead with four assists. We're about 18 and a half minutes away till kickoff. One more look at the U.S. 11 today, including the options on the bench. They've got some experience out there. Six players in the starting 11 with 111 caps or more. But no Julie Ertz. No Tobin Heath, both still out with knee issues. The manager, Andonofsky, made it clear to us yesterday. Both, though, are on track to be a full go later this summer. So with that in mind, Heather, what is the ideal U.S. 11? Well, if I was the coach of the U.S. women's national team, here's what I would roll out. A similar group of players that are, we're going to see today, right? But in that midfield, that's where I would have my main switch. I would have Sam Mewis as that pivot player really protecting the back line um, of the U.S. without Julie Ertz. I think she's wonderful in the air. She has a great physical presence, and she'll stay a little bit more committed and central than a Lindsey Horan would. But three up top, Rapino, Morgan, and Press, I think these three are the best starters that we have. They complement each other um, in the most positive way, and we'll see what they did in the France game was extraordinary. Especially this first 30 minutes of the France game, they all brought out each other's best qualities. Here you have Rapino getting in line with that left peg. She has such a good bend and pace on her left foot. She's the best left wing that the U.S. has, and that play went on to create a penalty kick. And here we have Alex Morgan using her best quality of running at players, being right on that back line, finding Chris and Press at the back post. She's going to want that one back. She loves to score goals. And we see that on this play. Kristen Press has to be respected. She is a goal-scoring player, but she can also tuck into this pocket here. So here you see France protecting the shot, and she plays Alex Morgan in. A beautifully slip pass. Alex Morgan, again, on that restraining line uh, as a dangerous player, maybe a little bit more than a player like Carly Lloyd, which is why that was my starting 11. So a lot of Kristen Press conversation there. Miss Press missing in your starting 11. Yeah, if I'm the coach of this team, uh, they should be so lucky. This is the 11 that I would go with. And, you know, I don't think we have any disagreement when it comes to the back. I think it's pretty solid back there. Now, Julie Ertz, yes, she is hurt right now, but Julie Ertz doesn't feel pain. Pain feels Julie Ertz, okay? I still have her. Even if she's 70%, I think that's how important she is to this team. So I still put her in to my, st my starting 11. What I do do, though, as I put Rose Lavelle over there on that right-hand side, on that off wing, to cut into the left-hand side. I think she is a better two-way player. I think you're going to need more defense on the right-hand side as opposed to the left-hand side. So that's the change that I, uh, that I would make there. All right, let's take a look here. I talked about Julie Ertz. She in that midfield position. She is all over the place. She is winning the tackles. She is setting the tone. And look, I know that the U.S. team isn't going to face a lot of teams where they're under a tremendous amount of pressure. But when it is against the elite teams, you need somebody in there to clean up the mess. And that's what Julie Ertz does. Speaking of cleaning up the mess, I know we talk so much about Crystal Dunn and her ability to go forward. But she is one of the best defenders in the world and certainly one of the best left backs in the world. We know she can get forward, but she's tenacious in the back there. And she will be called, uh, she will be called upon. I talked about Rose Lavelle over there on that right-hand side, that off wing, cutting into that wonderful and magnificent left foot of hers. We take a look here where she gets it. She looks up. This is the type of position that I want to see her in. A little bit more advanced, and she certainly can hit from distance. Do you remember that last show in Paris at the conclusion of the 2019 Women's World Cup? Mm. The one name that we all had big smiles on our face about the future of? Rose Lavelle. That's the one name everybody was talking about after that big win in Lyon for the title in France. Rose Lavelle, we'll see some Rose tonight as well. Sam Mewis in action, banged in 16 goals for Manchester City, also won an FA Cup. She's back in the States now with the Carolina Kurds. Tonight, though, it's Portugal on her mind.
Edition of the Copa America begins this Sunday. Host Brazil, led by Neymar, will take on Joseph Martinez in Venezuela. That one live on Fox. Also that day, the U.S. women back in action. They meet Jamaica here on FS1. A U.S. women's national team legend got some great news yesterday. Christy Pierce Rampone elected into the U.S. Soccer Hall of Fame. Part of a class that includes Steve Chirundolo, Jaime Moreno, and longtime MLS and U.S. soccer executive Kevin Payne. There is, though, one major name still missing. Yeah, of course, I was thrilled for Christy Rampone. She's very well deserving of that honor. But Hope Solo off the list for the second year in a row. I think that Hope, arguably the best American goalkeeper of all time, uh, to me, that's a glaring omission. Yeah, you might not like Hope Solo, but the reality is that she is uh, not, uh, not even talking about goalkeepers, uh, arguably the, the best American player of all time, uh, men or women, in what she did. And she certainly deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. But you got humans voting, and yeah. so you're going to have your biases and all that kind of stuff come into play. You Some don't want human humans error. voting, then fine. Don't have humans voting. Yeah, yeah. Hope belongs. Clive Charles. Yep. As well, another name. The U.S. women getting set to meet Portugal right now. The U.S. allowed to make six subs, and it's a sub that we expect to see in the second half that's on your mind right now. And Lynn Williams, to me, is a player to watch. I think that we should expect to see her late in the game, maybe 60th minute, 70th minute, something like that. But she is somebody that is very much on the fence for this team. Vlako Anonofsky has shown a lot of faith and belief in her, but she has failed to sort of... Uh, seal the deal. She hasn't uh, finished as well as she would like, and in the club level, you see her just bagging a ton of goals, but she has to be able to do it when the pressure is at its highest. I, I agree. I don't think anybody's been given more opportunities uh, than Lynn Williams, so it'll be interesting to see. Player on the field, though, Crystal Dunn, and I talked a little bit about her in the previous uh, segment, going up and down that left-hand side. I think she'll have plenty of space, plenty of time to get forward. She loves to go forward. I think she's become really, really smart at picking and choosing when and also understanding what her defensive responsibilities are. Uh, I love this player. I think that any team in the world, club or international, would love to have a Crystal Dunn on their team. We did a quick weather report. A little hot, a little humid in Houston. 88 feels like Feels like 90 something around. 90s, in, the, it's a in the high 90s. And if you notice, high humidity. The team had these. Uh, the uh, cooling vests, packs yeah, on. packs on. So they, they aren't really that big. And they, they don't look like linebackers. And the manager line. for Portugal, his one chief concern taken on the U.S., our fitness. Not sure how our fitness is going to be. Enjoy the fitness of steamy, humid Houston here in June. The U.S. women unbeaten in their last 39 overall and last 53 at home. Can they extend those streaks against Portugal? Walk off. Walkouts and kickoff next.
It's no such thing as a friendly when you play the United States. Forward, Lloyd on side in the box, and a goal for the U.S. And that is such a good goal by the United States. Rapino on the shot. Go! It is all USA, the number one ranked team in the world. The best in the world. As they get ready to take on Portugal for the 10th time. They are 9-0-0 against Portugal. Welcome everyone to our coverage here on FS1 along with former U.S. international Ali Wagner. I'm J.P. Della Camera. We've seen the starting 11, Ali. Julie Ertz injured, not available. Could this be the 11 without Ertz that could start game one of the Olympics? Yeah, I really have no doubt about that. I think this back line, they've been Vlachianowski's choice. They were his predecessor's choice for that back line, including Alyssa Nair in midfield. You said it. I think Haran is the natural one to slide into that role. I actually think it's a really big game for her today. And then up top, I think the evolution ha has come organically for the front three of Rapino, Alex, and Press. I think Rapino's been in great form with this U.S. team. She leads this calendar year, 2021, with seven goals. Alex Morgan has been on fire in club, four goals in straight games out of five. And then you look at Kristen Press not playing with, you know, club right now, but she's been bright every time she stepped on the pitch for this U.S. side. Teams are out on the field as we await the national anthems of the two countries. With the playing of the national anthem of Portugal to be followed by the playing of the Star Spangled Banner. women's national team wearing rainbow numbers tonight and sunny to celebrate lgbtq and pride month and to support the you can play project the game jerseys for each player will be put up for auction with proceeds donated to you can play a very hot night in houston texas fitness alley would have to be a concern for these two teams the u.s more used to it though <laughs> than portugal a big concern for Portugal. I mean, the U.S. is the fittest team in the world historically, and we see it every time they step out, and, and the tempo and the rhythm that they play with, it's going to put Portugal under a lot of pressure. I'm really curious to see how this Portuguese team comes out tonight. Are they going to 
high press, try to pick the U.S. off in advanced areas, or are they going to really sit back and absorb? Well, besides finalizing the roster for the upcoming Olympics, Alley, what else is on the mind of Vladko Andonovsky as he gets these three games in before the roster announcement, then two more before the Olympics? I think it has to be Lindsey Horan slotting into that sixth spot. I think this is a massive game tonight. We've said all along, why are they not giving anyone else minutes there? The argument was that she's indestructible. She's Iron Woman. She's irreplaceable. And so no one was stepping into that position because they weren't getting time. Well, here's a good look at what it's gonna, this U.S. team is going to look like without Haran. And I don't mean the evaluation is going to be of necessarily Lindsay Haran. It's going to be what does this U.S. team look like without Julie Ertz? And how does that impact this side? Yes, defensively is what we all key in on. All of those details, her ability to screen that back line. The physical presence she has, the way she drives the press, the one that actually ends up winning it after their press. Can Lindsay Horan fill those voids and then still bring the, the offensive creative side that she's capable of bringing to a game? You will see the USA tonight in the white uniforms with the rainbow numerals. Portugal will be in red and green. The match referee is Danielle Chesky from the USA. Captains are Carol Koster for Portugal, and of course, Becky Sauerbrunn will captain again the USA side. Becky played her 100th cap in Houston back in February of 2016 versus Canada. Number 14, Emily Solent. US plays on Sunday against Jamaica, who started off the summer series tonight with a one to nothing win in game one over Nigeria. Denisha Blackwood, who plays for the Houston Dash. This is her stadium. Scored the only goal in the second half. See those streaks that the U.S. have going for them unbeaten in their last 39 games. At home, it's unbeaten in 53. They have been like a machine. And one of the reasons why Portugal thinks they're improving, they play better teams. They play the best tonight. Waiting on the whistle from Daniel Chesky, and we are underway. Portugal with it. We'll see how much possession they are able to maintain on this night. The U.S. going after them right away in this heat of Houston. Switched across by Nazare, number seven, all the way to the right side of the field. Immediately, Portugal will get numbers forward, and that's cut off. It was intended for Norton, and now will roll out of play. Both sides think it's theirs, but it's a... U.S. throw-in for outstanding left-back Crystal Dunn. It's been their starting left-back since the 2018 She Believes Cup. Off Mewis, then the header. Coming back the other way, the legs got tangled up in the first foul. Lindsey Horan slowly getting up is okay. She's in Julie Ertz's spot tonight. The foul was given to Diana Silva. Done to the left, keeping it on the ground for Rapino. U.S. to Rapino, that's cut off. Rapino with goals in four straight games. It's a career high for her. Dal Kemper. That long ball denied by Portugal it will be a throw in. Rapino, turning 36 in July, leads a team in scoring this calendar year. Back to Megan on the left, and it's going to go out. Still belongs to the U.S. It's done. Getting it in quickly. U.S. has broken up. The U.S. will get it right back again. Portugal can't afford to give the ball away as easily as they did just there. Or it's a long night. Well, and that's one of the things they... Francisco Neto talked about last time when we spoke with them, and it was the ability to play past that counter press the United States. There is going to be space. It's just recognizing it and getting into those areas to break that initial press. And just early on, JPM getting a look at it, and there looks like Portugal is sitting in their 4-4-2 in their defensive low block. 
which is not surprising. They have the ability to play on the break, but it's getting those two center forwards up on the center backs that they're probably going to look to take advantage of. Just change the ball. And the game moves on with Del Kemper to the right on that pass. Lewis have numbers forward into the box, headed away by Robello. Dunn. Rapino. She was chased by Amato. Megan's short pass. Rabello picked it off, but then lost it to Alex Morgan. Rapino, left side. Deflected ball. Picked up by Haran, and then she lost it. U.S. recovers. Kelly O'Hara. That's blocked. Slight deflection. Press was going for it, but now it's cleared away, and Portugal's under pressure here. The throw in from O'Hara. Press being held, spinning, press, lost it there in the end. Norton, that's dangerous, back to goal. Pereira, good thing she was paying attention. That was dangerous for Norton. Made up by Morgan. A cutting ball, that's done. Lavelle slipped as she tried to make that play. Press tried to tuck it in. Horskill looking to break, and again, they are cut off. It's O'Hara. Kelly, cutting ball, press. Haran, away from the traffic. Captain Sauerbrunn, keeping it low. And then played back again to Pereira. In that U.S. pressure. Didn't quite result in a takeaway there, but almost. No, oh, but it's twice been Lindsey Horan reading the play incredibly well and being that stopgap. Near side, Nazare. She's just 18. Deflected forward. And Portugal break with numbers. That answers that as Dunn picked it off. Nice play in the middle, and now they break again. Portugal on the attack, five going forward now. Gonna make something happen. Silva intercepted. In the middle, it's press. Almost breaking away, trying to show the referee that she was held, <laughs> and she was, and sold that well too. And it's such a good spot for Kristen Press to be in to get that release ball out for the U.S. And then she just slaloming through the pressure of Portugal, draws that foul, the recovery run of Dolores Silva, who's one of the most important players in this Portuguese side. She plays in that six role and is really the one that is responsible for opening up the pitch for them offensively. And, and she does the role in a way like Julie Yurtz, where she can slide over and help protect their back line. Cross by Press, and it's knocked down. And cleared out, throw in U.S. Kristen Press very dangerous on that right side. Cross in there by Lavelle, and that's cleared to safety as well. O'Hara. Press lost it there. O'Hara on the recovery run. Got it all the way back. Dahlkemper, who played for Manchester City. 12 games for her there. The team went 10-1-1, finishing second place to Chelsea. Almost too long, but Press was able to keep it alive. Press holding. Blocked. It was Nazare who made the play. Now showing to help out. The Portugal are hemmed in there. Horan did her best to keep the play alive for the U.S., and now it's O'Hara. Horan, who plays for Portland in the NWSL, pushing it back. Dahl Camper to Sauerbrunn. Two steady center backs. Horan in the circle. Sauerbrunn outside. Dunn, look how I Dunn has been all game, really. Right from the get-go. It's another block from Horan. Mewis, Rapino, Lavelle, 
That's deflected. And that deflection took all the sting out of that ball. Easy play for Pereira. And it looked like it could have been a handball. And Costa. And in fact, it was, and the U.S. did incredibly well just to regain this back. And then Rapino finds herself in the interior. And just watch how quickly the U.S. is playing through the lines of pressure. Lavelle between the seam. And there's the raised arm of Carol Costa. So 19, 20 yards away from goal. Aran and Rapino with a conversation before this ball was struck. Wallace in the ninth minute as Pereira sets up the wall. And then WSL Rapino had one just from about this spot that she tucked away against Portland. We'll see if she steps up to it or her end. Moran takes a couple of steps back. On that whistle, Rapino with a shot right off the wall. O'Hara, first one to recover. Up the middle pass from Horan is picked off. Norton, another dangerous ball back. And now it's press on the turn, looking shooting right at Pereira from point blank range. And it's out for USA throw-in. And that's one of the risks for this Portuguese side is overplaying, trying to play out of that press of the United States. Have not been successful. We're 10 minutes in. And line again for press, tackled out. Corner, USA. Lupino is gonna come over to take it. Seven goals in 2021, leads the team there, her best every year, 2019 in terms of goals scored, with nine, six of those were at the Women's World Cup. Towards the back post, headed by Haran, right at goal, and Pereira was there, no rebound. Pereira making her 20th international appearance. like that one off her left foot. U.S. back in the ball again. Driven long by Haram. Headed away. Gun first one to it. Slipping it through and it's cleared away again by Portugal. But once again, it's one and done in terms of the passing from Portugal. Not been able to combine at all so far in the first half. Down that left side, Silva. Jessica Silva, cutting ball in, that's blocked. And the U.S. will recover there. Jessica Silva has already played in one game for a new team, Kansas City in the NWSL. Came on as a sub for about 16 minutes in their last game. The U.S. going strong, pushing it wide left. Press, who has been switching sides now, is over on that left side, battling for the ball, winning it, cutting into the box. Try to find Morgan, it's blocked. First one on it though, Mewis shooting low, right to Pereira. Those three work well together as a threesome, right? Rapino, Morgan, and Press. Yeah, there's good balance between them with Morgan's ability to stretch the back line. Rapino wants the ball at her feet, and then Press is a good hybrid of both. from the NWSL's Washington Spirit the acquisition during the offseason. Portugal back on the ball in the middle of the park. Play back. Rebello. 
one of the most experienced players. And this 23-player roster for Portugal, seven play for Benfica, who were the champions in only their third year of existence. And seven play for Sporting, who finished in second place. So 14 of the 23 from the two top clubs in women's first division soccer in Portugal. And their season ended about three weeks ago. Here's LaBelle. Taking a shot, carried wide. Herrera, the strong there with Pino, on it quickly. Sends it all the way back. Dal Kemper, Sauerbrunn. Back and forth they go. 14th minute, zeros in the board. It's been all U.S. in terms of all the stats, possession, shots, shots on target. But nothing yet to show for it. Quickly, that's picked off. Norton got it to the outside. U.S. fights, wins it. Done. Dal Kemper. Everybody back for Portugal to defend. They want to be as compact as they can, not giving up much space to the U.S. Easier said than done, but that's the game plan. The U.S. She had Rapino breaking. Every time Portion gets the ball, they can't seem to find an outlet. No, and they wanted to play as a unit, and right now the U.S. is disrupting that. Done. Slipping it through, the turn there, and it falls harmlessly to Pereira. Looked more dangerous than it turned out to be. Yeah, and the reality is the U.S. is just forcing turnovers in advanced areas, and Portugal cannot get out of their own half. This one lands at the feet of Rose Lavelle as she's driving towards that back line. No one steps up to pressure her, so she unleashes it. And Rapino's not close enough to take advantage of that loose ball that parried it away. On this left side, Portugal will look for some room. Jessica Silva, a couple of fancy steps there. Got it forward. Held up there, Norton. Low shot, nothing much on it. Easy save for Alyssa Nair. And the reality is that I think this is what Portugal is looking at, is their opportunity to find joy in this game. When they are in lower, it looked like initially, sometimes they'll step out into a 4-4-2, get that second player to step up if Dahl Kemper's on it. But for the most part, it's a 4-1-4-1 defensively in that low block. So that's just leaving one player, Deanna Silva, as the outlet for them. And she's been isolated when support hasn't come quick enough underneath. And so you're going to get some of these occasional looks on the break where if Diana Silva can release it and bring a Jessica Silva into play, they will find some joy. Well, Copa America kicks off Sunday with Brazil taking on Venezuela. Coverage starts at 4.30 p.m. Eastern on Fox. Then it's Colombia versus Ecuador at 8 p.m. Eastern on FS2. They've changed the ball already twice, <laughs> and, and that was after 15 minutes. Maybe it doesn't like the humidity. Yeah. I think that might have played a factor in this one. We're expecting hydration breaks, one in each half. In the heat of Houston, trying to mimic conditions maybe for this summer in Japan. Driven across by Dunn. Oh, Havana didn't get to that one. Fortunately for her, neither did Rapino. And that ball was lost out for a corner. Needing apology there. And Jessica Silva. And coming into this game, I thought one of the weaknesses of this Portuguese side was their ability to defend crosses. They had done well enough to this point. But it feels like a matter of time. Rapino ready, puts one right to the middle. The flex free and is cleared away by Portugal. Portugal spoke yesterday about confidence and courage on the ball, but they've not had the ball long enough to exhibit any real coverage. Ball set forward, flag staying down. Rapino's cross, nobody to tap it home. Press. That cross was denied, and it should be a U.S. throw -in. In 
quickly done. And that's knocked out. Another corner for the U.S. This is a really good look at the expansive shape initially for the United States, and then just the out in right of Megan Rapino allows her to stay on side, collect that ball, take it down, and then just drive, drive that ball across the goal mouth, inches away from a tap home opening goal. That was an excellent run, angle to stay on side. Fourth corner, U.S. Rapino in swinger near post. That's cleared. Not out of danger yet. Silva will just clear it to safety. U.S. throw in. Sauerbrunn. Abby Dahlkemper. Strong off the right foot. Headed down, but not much on it. And Pereira not really challenged on that. And three good balls already in the opening minutes from Abby Dahlkemper. She can open up the pitch, utilize that width, and help stretch out this Portuguese team that has numbers back centrally. But that one was more cutting in the interior, something we don't see from her all too often. It's going to be off the hand of Lebel. Free kick for Portugal. Ali, how has Lindsay Horan looked in Julie Ertz's spot tonight? Uh, I think her positioning has been really bright. I mean, you do, could argue that Portugal hasn't connected three passes to, to move the United States, and they're sitting comfortably in their defensive shape and their counter press. But I think she's been in the right spots, and we've already seen her winning, winning the ball back and, and providing that countermeasure that Julie Ertz so often does. Well pushed up. That's deflected away. That was Horan again making that play initially. O'Hara. Sauerbrunn. And, and then Dahl Kemper. And JP, I think what's interesting about Horan too is that you're seeing her get involved in the attack. So she has made some runs forward out of that deeper position. O'Hara by the corner flag. That cross, back post. Nobody home and that ball was out of play anyway. Goal kick. Portugal. Portugal using these upcoming games as preparation for World Cup qualifying for 2023. They're in a group with Germany, Serbia, Turkey, Israel, and Bulgaria. Germany would be the clear favorite in that group. Two-year-old Pereira off the left foot. U.S. got a deflection, and they'll track this ball down. Crystal Dunn. Now with the Portland Thorns. Rapino. Culture the left foot. That pass, though, is denied. And the ball is given right back, though, to the U.S. Portugal pretty much just defending this opening half. First 21 minutes. And this is what they did against Sweden. They played in this 4-1-4-1, and it took till the waning minutes of the opening half for Sweden to get their opening goal. They ended up beating them 2-0. But similar approach. LaBelle. The gun pass was blocked tackle away but that's going to belong to Portugal On the offside 22nd minute scoreless here USA and Portugal summer series consisting of five matches in Texas four in Houston one at the brand new stadium in Austin First game ever played there. Now the new home of Austin FC of Major League Soccer. Throw in for the U.S. That is Francisco Neto. He took over as a head coach at the age of 32 back in 2014. Just had his contract extended to 2024. They like what he has brought to the table with Portugal. Nice 
screen. Morgan played it back, and that's going to be knocked away. Again, the safety throw in U.S. Lavelle tapping it. O'Hara. Another corner. Here's another area where they missed Julie Ertz as one of those weapons on those corner kicks. And Rapinoe's targeted Haran on the first two. Looked like Mewis on the third. Yes, have many other weapons, though. Way off target, intended for Dahl Kemper. Sauerbrunn, four-time NWSL Defender of the Year. Pushed forward in the left. Cut back. And that's top of the netting. And maybe I'm just old school on corner kicks, but you've got Sam Mewis, you've got Lindsey Horan, you've got the service capabilities of Megan Rapino, best in the world. Why not just put that in the mixer and let those players go up and make a play? This was the resulting cross coming from that corner kick, found its way over to that far side. The Sam Hughes couldn't wrap around it. And that's one of the things that the United States has to do and look to hone in on in this game against Portugal is that final third efficiency. That's what they've been lacking in this great run that they've had. If you want to take this team to the next level heading the Olympics, it's that final third production. Dalton was trying to make that play, and now it's Portugal in the break as far upfield as they've gotten in the first 24 plus minutes. Ball is crossed in towards that back post. Norton was the closest one to it. It's a goal kick for Alyssa Nair. This is going to be a hydration break, so uh, Ali and I will get hydrated. We toss it back to Rob in the studio. JP, Ali, thank you. Quick look at the numbers. 70% of possession for the United States women's national team out shooting Portugal 8-1. to one. The Portuguese playing with that low block of D. How is the U.S. handling it? I think it's just going okay for them, to be honest. I don't think it would be the worst idea for the U.S. to let Portugal play a little bit. Let them actually complete more than one pass at a time, which sounds counterintuitive and sounds against USA DNA. But if they do that, the low block of Portugal will actually start to come out, and then you can get an Alex Morgan in behind. But if it's going to be 11 players uh, 30 yards and into the, to the goal, it's going to be a long night for the USA. Yeah, and this Portugal team is, is not good, but they know they're not good, and they're going to make it difficult for the U.S., and they're going to pack it in. Uh, there is advantages out there for the U.S., advantages in the air, advantages of set pieces. Don't mess up corner kicks like that. Don't make it complicated. Put it in the mixer and see what happens. The, the Preston Rapino switching of sides very early on was interested. Didn't quite result in anything new happening there. Long distance shooting. I think we saw Rose hit one from, uh, from long, uh, long distance. Keep that because that does draw, draw them out there. You get one against this team, you'll get six. I think it is really critical for the U.S. team to continue to work on changing the point of attack. They really have to move the ball left to right and be very patient because if you do that there will be gaps and there will be seams and they'll they will be able to break down this portugal team all u.s through 26 minutes but nothing on the scoreboard yet jp thank you rob you know one player that's not had many touches so far ali is alex morgan have not really been able to find her yeah, but I, I don't think that's surprising in the way that Portugal is set up. There's not going to be a lot of space in the inside, and so it's going to come down to Alex Morgan's movement in the 18, the timing of her runs. We saw a really good one uh, earlier, but for the most part, she's going to have limited touches and just going to have to take the chances when they come to her. She's been doing that in the NWSL, by the way, so I, I'm, not, I'm not concerned about how she's going to find her way into this match. Sometimes that's just the, the way that a striker has to play when you're against a team that's playing in a deep block. She told us yesterday she feels now that she's 100%. She was behind in January, missed the January camp due to COVID, but that long NWSL preseason that included the Challenge Cup 
got her ready. She's got four goals. She leads the league in goals scored. And surprisingly, I would have to say, Orlando is in first place in the <laughs> NWSL. <laughs> that is a surprise. Right? It absolutely is. They they figured out how to play in this league. Cutting ball up. Intended for Morgan. And that's blocked. Herrera, they were waiting for her to call for that ball. Almost some miscommunication back there. But all is well now for Portugal. And, and look, Alex Morgan told us just yesterday when we were speaking with her, sometimes her job, and one of the things Vlaco is helping her understand are, are these little nuances, the de these details, and one of them is to occupy center backs. Understand how you can free up space for your, your teammates around you. Play back by Robello. Herrera pushing it. Marshall under pressure. That's first time they've completed multiple passes as it's forced back by Pinto. It's that, not that they don't, that it's not is that so they don't well, have skill. That is so well done. You're exactly right because, look, the United States knows they have to stop Dolores Silver from changing the point. Portugal will get stuck in one side and watching Sam Uis just feast her way over onto her and get that pressure as soon as the ball arrived, force that turnover for the United States. Yeah. It's not that Portugal lacks talent. They have talent, but we're not really getting a chance to see it because of these unforced errors. Maybe a case of nerves, who knows? Got a lot of young players here. Lavelle sending it in, headed once. It's by Morgan. And it should be a goal kick for Pereira. Uh, JP, but to your point, though, I think it's also the pressure of the United States. Best in the world at the counter press. Yeah. And the two, Amato, who you're looking at there, only her second cap. She's 21, played for champions Benfica. these young Portugal players coming up through the under 17s and then under 19s recently becoming full internationals O'Hara and now it's coming all the way back Abidal Kemper Sauerbrunn Crystal Dawn off that left foot over the top and is just over hit. And a rare run in behind by Megan Rapino, and it was a good one. Half hour gone, Allie. Your takeaways? What are you thinking? Just final third, making the right decision. Is it an extra pass? Is it a cutback ball? Is it a ball that's rifled across the goal mouth? I think those decisions have to be better for the United States. And right now, you're playing a low block against Portugal. You know, can you get some of those runs out of midfield? Can you get Lovell surging in behind if you utilize the width with your wingers? I don't think there's enough counter movement and rotation happening between the front six. Calmly played back by Sarabum to Alyssa Nair. He earlier had a great run, 10 consecutive shutouts. And as great as Hope Solo was and Brian Ascuri, that was a record for the U.S. women's national team. For the men, too, for that matter. Ten consecutive shutouts. Well over 900 consecutive shutout minutes before Sweden scored on her. And it was a ridiculous amount of minutes without shots on goal, even. Yeah. Ertz factor. Norton dropping it back. Looks to get the return ball and does. Andrea Norton will send it wide to the right side. Silva inside block. Another go at it against Dunn. Dunn wins the 1v1. I thought that was out though over the end line. Apparently not. It's going to be able to throw in. Good effort from Crystal Dunn. And you love to hear the appreciation from the fans. It's just a simple 1v1 situation right now. And, and Silva does well to drive Dunn in the 18. Doesn't force a foul though off of her. Dunn just keeps her feet moving, picks the ball off as soon as Silva makes the air. You know, slipped as she tried to make that last move and Dunn got it farther upfield. That ball was out.
33rd minute. Zeros on the board. U.S. has dominated against Portugal. 9-0-0. Outscoring them 38 to nothing. 20 to nothing on home soil. Winning all four in the U.S. against Portugal. Dal Kemper moving it ahead. All the way to this left side. He was sending it in. Morgan had to step behind that last defender, but it's deflected out. Yet another corner for the U.S. And a thing of beauty from Dahl Kemper, who released Mewis on that far side. Again, her distribution out of the back. So important for this team. And Mewis, almost a beautiful ball in behind. That's how quickly the United States can find space. Lapino. Now done. He's got deflected out. It was. We also have another corner. And you'd love to just see press pick off Lindsey Horan's runner on one of these. This time they went short. Rapino from Dunn sending it in there. It comes back. Puts up foot save. Pereira robbing Kristen Press. Another U.S. corner. That was a quality save. Another short corner. That's the way they did it the last time. This time Dunn will send it across. Bad clearance. O'Hara. That one hit off crushed up. O'Hara again. That's blocked. Horan with it. They run into each other, two U.S. players. Now Portugal will break. But no real help there. That's Nazare getting it across. Now the U.S. will get some numbers back. Nazare. Silva. She was trying to find Tatiana Pinto, but it's Del Kemper in the interception. And a good look at how Portugal initially is committing just about six players to the attack, leaving their back four to deal with the, the attacking presence of Alex Morgan, who remains above the ball, and then the wingers. Del Kemper. Sour run. Halfway line gained. U.S. is wide. Setting it forward. Collins cleared but not out. Settled. LaBelle wanted the left foot. Haran just missed LaBelle. He was making the cut. Well, here's a look at the short corner the United States to, decides to go with. A little interplay between Dunn and Rapino, and she just lofts that one to the far post. Portugal can't clear it out of harm's way and falls to Kristen Press, who has a go. Press looks sharp. I mean, she's not playing club football, but she's been sharp in these opening 30 minutes or so. She's had a good last couple of years on this U.S. squad. Last year, one of their better scores with Haran, seven goals and three assists on the campaign. She's got 60 international goals. Haran, and that's headed out. It was Marshall who cleared it. It's a U.S. throwing. Yeah, and that's better, J.P., from the United States. Sometimes playing those balls from deeper positions where Portugal isn't pinned in quite as far. You're getting that rotation. Press laid it off. Lobel, that's blocked. Which is back. Yep. Horan. Del Kemper. Blocked as well. LaBelle, first one to it. Nice touch. That one was too heavy as she went down. And that ball goes out for a goal kick. Good to have LaBelle back in the NWSL. Playing now for O.L. Reign. Who are really stacking their team now. <laughs> they are. Right? Yeah, wait till all the O.L. players arrive. 
Yeah. Four From European France. players yeah. are coming. Yeah. yeah, they're they're coming. Some may already be here, for all we know, but but they are on their yeah. way for sure. And Alana Cook just joined them as well. She played for them last year in the Challenge Cup in 2020 on loan from Paris Saint Germain. Yeah, was, yeah. Now she just signed again. La Samer coming, Eugenie La Samer, Marochon, Buadi, but Lavelle immediately had an impact in the first week back. Watch on the ball. All the way back to goal. They can get into the locker room 0 0 at halftime. They'll be pleased. Nazare's pass, it was blocked, here's done. Force back. Dal Kemper, Lobel. Outside the circle, it's Becky Sauerbrunn, high upfield, Crystal Dunn. Only Washington and North Carolina in the NWSL. Left side line, Rapino. Trying to play it across, and that hits side netting. And it looks to me like Portugal is content with allowing Becky Sauerbrunn to step up into that, past that first line of defense. Francisco Neto was keen on telling us he was wary of Dahl Kemper's ability to open up the game, and I do think that they're allowing her to then get the United States pinned on that far side. That's the trigger when they're going to start to close. Took his team to Euro 2017. They lost in the group stage. Portugal has never qualified for a World Cup or Olympic tournament on the women's side. The men will start in Euro 2020. It starts this week. Portugal was in a tough group, by the way, with France, Germany, and Hungary. <laughs> Good luck, everyone. Buis, shot one wide. Buis just returning from Manchester City. 16 goals in 32 games in all competitions. That's an amazing strike ratio, and she's not a forward. <laughs> that would be great for a forward. I'd take it. Yeah, it's greater for a midfielder. What did she tell us yesterday? I, I was proving that I can score goals. Wants to continue down that path. She enjoyed going to Manchester City. Said one day she may go back again. She didn't know. Le leaving the options open. Loved playing in both leagues and felt that at this time it was better to come back to the North Carolina Courage. Yeah, and to be fair, I thought she looked a bit off the pace when she came back with the Courage. It's a different game, right? Absolutely. That's why she said she didn't want to compare the two leagues. It's a different style. Both excellent. We're a little more biased here. We say that the NWSL is the best league in the world, but I'll tell you what, England's getting better. We're factual, better. not biased. Yeah. We're factual. That too, yes. <laughs> I'm with you. But the English league got a lot better because of the talent that they were importing from other countries, including the U.S. U.S. to the outside. Done. Rapino. Sam U.S. shaking free. Took the shot, and it's wide. But why not have a go there, the way things have been going in this first half? And with the strike rate you mentioned moments ago, Rapino dropping deep. You're getting that rotation with Dunn getting high, and that puts Rapino on the inside. She can become a playmaker, and there is space in the interior for CMU as for Rose Lavelle between the lines. It just has to be on with the timing that moment was. Sam's sister, Christy Mewis, available tonight on the subs bench. Has had a very good year for club and country, and is in the mix, certainly. As we see her, this is her home, her home stadium as well, Christy Mewis. Upfield it comes, U.S. looking for one before the half ends. Dominic. 
dominated all the numbers, but not so efficient in that final third so far. LaBelle. O'Hara. Rose got free off her right foot. Herrera spilled it. Made the save. Jessica Silva is on it. Put a teammate in a tough spot. But Portugal is able to come away with the ball. Push there. No foul given. Horan recovers. Moves it ahead. Mewis. Morgan left. Alex and got a whistle. Goes against the U.S. Jessica Silva is okay. Just a couple minutes left here in this opening half. First half analysis. Rob, Alexi, and Heather standing by and a Summer of soccer preview. So much going on on Fox. With the U.S. women's national team, they'll have one of their send-off games on Fox. We've got Copa America starting in a matter of days. Gold Cup after that. Busy summer. And MLS continues as well. On the left side, Rapino. This cross. Or shot cross or whatever. Didn't work. And frustration from Rapina. You can see it. She knows she's got to do better there. Lots to talk about for the coaching staff. Black girl Andonofsky is not lost in 18 games. And maybe even more remarkable, they've only given up one first half goal. What, 64 goals? Four? Four against it's, in this range? It's crazy. Reign? It's crazy. Lewis, up the middle. Can they get one here? Rapino knocked away from her. Looked like a good potential opportunity there. Seconds left. Before we hit 45, Rapino blocked. The half may end on this corner, depending on stoppage time. And it's just a good win back again in an advanced area. The pass is loose from Portugal to break out. And now you've got Dunn trying to play a one-two, but Rapino gets turned up. The ball bounces fortuitously for her. She has a shot. They've been going with the short corner. Not that time. O'Hara. Press. Back on the right side now. That's blocked and tapped out. Throw in U.S. We're in stoppage time. Why? Oh, why? Not just put it in. O'Hara taking your advice to the middle, headed down but wide. Decent opportunity again for Sam Mewis. And right now it's final third efficiency that's lacking. It's such a good ball that's rifled in. Sam Mewis sitting in a pocket of space between three defenders. No one closes her down. No one even knocks her off that. Clear shot. Can't convert. Three minutes. Three minutes were added on in stoppage time. U.S. not just scoring goals for club, but country too. Seven in her last 12 games for the U.S. She's got three this year, this calendar year. Second to Rapinos, seven. Dal Camper, wide for Crystal Dunn. Side, it's Kelly O'Hara. High upfield, 1v1 at the moment. Got to the end line and off that deflection, another corner. <laughs> Couple of minutes gone and stoppage time. Another short corner for Rapino. O'Hara. Rapino. Oh, nice return. And the flag went up. Oh, 
Portugal with his goal kick should be able to end this half scoreless with the U.S. And it up. This will bounce away. And the foul to the U.S. with the ball. Seconds left in the opening half. Blocked by Portugal. It will roll, but not out yet. Now it's out. But the half may end here. And if it does, Portugal is going to be the happier of the two sides. This is a win for them. That's it. 45 minutes in the books. Francisco Neto would be pleased. Vlatko Andonovsky and his staff with things to talk about. After the break, Rob, Alexi, and Heather will take you through a busy halftime.
The summer of soccer is officially underway here at Fox. Starts tonight, but boy, it really heats up Sunday. When the Copa America begins, Brazil in action. Messi and Neymar looking to shine at a tournament that concludes July 10th, which is the same day that the CONCACAF Gold Cup begins. Mexico, your reigning champs there. Rob Stone, Heather O'Reilly, Alexi Lawless, welcoming you back inside our studio. Despite having 70% of the possession, out shooting Portugal 14 to 2, the number one ranked team in the world has been shut out at the half for the third time already this campaign. Kristen Press with numerous opportunities though to change that. It wasn't a great start for the U.S., but here you have Kristen Press showing why she's so dangerous on that right side. Gets that great shot off. And Rose Lavelle with a little bit of time and space here. She says, all right, I'll take one from there. Causing a little bit of problems, but shooting from distance. We talked about that at the uh, hydration break. The theme of these corner kicks in the first half has been short corners. Successful or not, this one was successful because it leads to another chance for Kristen Press, who takes it well off the volley and a good save from the goalkeeper. All right, so Heather, what does the U.S. have to do in the second half to, to fight their way through this bunker type D? Well, they definitely need to be more patient with possession. I said that they have to kind of go left to right uh, across the field more often. I think they, they need to continue to interchange players because they need to cause confusion with the Portuguese back line. This was a good example of, of a sort of choreographed rotation that they have. Instead of Crystal Dunn being wide, you have Sam Mewis being wide. And she tries to play Alex Morgan in over the top there. That's where I'd like to see her actually pull that out and try to switch the point of attack and get Rose in on the other side, who was uh, clearly waiting for it on that right wing. Let's be honest, this was a sloppy and disjointed and I think ultimately stubborn type of half from the U.S. And for Vakal Antonovsky, if he's looking at this, if this was the plan, uh, then the plan was wrong or the execution was wrong in terms of the personnel. You want to continue with this personnel? You're in there. I don't know if he's a screamer or not in the, uh, in the locker room, but he's making sure that he, they understand they're not doing what they want. And if they can't do what he wants, make the changes. That's what you're paid to do. And there is game-changing talent available on the bench for the U.S., as always. Coming up, we're going to get you ready for the start of the Copa America here on Fox. Neymar and Messi primed to reclaim the headlines in Brazil starting this weekend.
The 47th edition of the Copa America begins this Sunday. Host Brazil, led by Neymar, will take on Joseph Martinez in Venezuela live on Fox. Later in the day, the U.S. women back in action. 10 Eastern here on FS1 as they take on Jamaica getting ready for Copa America. And look who made the Columbia roster, Lex. Char, look at that. Whoa. Congratulations to him and to the Portland Timbers. That's a nice little feather in their cap. Great one. Columbia ranked 15th in the latest FIFA rankings. There are five top 20 nations participating in Copa America. Brazil in at number three. They fire up on Sunday. 68 straight games of the goal scored for the U.S. women. None tonight yet. Second half from Houston on the backside. Surprising scoreline after 45 minutes. USA and Portugal with zeros on the board. U.S. had the edge in every statistic imaginable alley, but nothing to show for it. They've got a deep bench, a lot of stars in the bench, some game breakers, but we are thinking that Blatko Andonovsky is going to let his players solve this for at least another maybe 15 or 20 minutes, I would think. Yeah, I would absolutely think so. You know, you get to that 70-minute mark, that's where I, I expect to see changes, and the reality is they're trying to prepare for the Olympics. They come here to deal with the weather, and they're probably trying to replicate what the rhythm is going to be like in the Olympics, where you have a few days off game, a few days off in game, and, and what does that rhythm look like? They're going to face Sweden, then New Zealand, and then Australia, so the guess is in that middle game is where you're going to rest some of your core starters. Wouldn't be surprised to see the same moving forward, but there's still players on this bench that need to show up and you make a claim for a roster spot, so those players have to get in, and it'll be curious to see who he chooses to slot in 
tonight. That could tell us something. Unless there's an injury or someone suffering from heat, you would expect these players to go 60 to 70 minutes minimum. That's the Vladko <laughs> record, which is amazing <laughs> when you think about it. Pia Sunhaga has a record that was similar when she took over. A lot of great numbers in U.S. soccer history. Four World Cups they've won, including the last two. They've won four Olympics as well. Number one ranked team in the world. Those numbers, we weren't kidding about the domination. The <laughs> domination, 14 to 2, the 9 nothing edge in corners and 70% possession alley. But as you know, with possession, it's what you do with it. It's yeah. not the number. Yeah, and I was just disappointed in the first half at, at how the U.S. did not manipulate Portugal. I think you saw some imbalancing happening individually, but I didn't see the free-flowing movement that we're so used to seeing with the rotations that they have, with the ability of the tens like a Sam Mewis, Rose Lavelle. But I was impressed by that lady there, number nine, Lindsay Huran. I thought she did everything that was asked of her in terms of her defensive responsibilities, and she was still able to input on the offensive side. Here's a note in the first half. Alex Morgan, 10. First half touches, fewest of any field player on either team. Every other USA player had at least 31. And I know that at her position, the way the game is going, that she would have fewer touches, perhaps, but that's a big discrepancy. We will start this one all over. One of the great things about Alex Morgan, the runs that she makes, but because of the way Portugal has played, defended in the low block, it's been hard for her to find that freedom to make those runs. Yeah, and sometimes it's, you know, for a player of her stature, it's going to be about smaller movements, more effective movements. To the end line, press cutting it back. See what the second half brings. You can imagine the dialogue at halftime. Not just between the head coach, but sometimes the assistant coaches will do the talking. But lots of times, Ali, as you know, players do the talking to try to sort it out. Too long for Rapino. Serena Amado with this throw in. I think one of the things that Portugal will want to do better this half, take better care of the ball, because the U.S., frustrated by not scoring, they're going to come out strong, you would think, here in the second half. Sauerbrunn. Rapino. Left side line. Tees it up on the cross, but right at Pereira, too close to her, not close enough to Mewis, who was making the run. There is best save in that opening half, that foot save off the Kristen Press shot. Otherwise, it's 1-0 USA. And you get the sense, Allie, that what Alexi was talking about earlier when he said if they get one, they may get six. I don't know <laughs> if it'll be six, but I do think if they do get one, more goals will come. And they may come in bunches, but right now, it's been hard for them to get goal number one. No, and I think that's a fair assumption with this United States team, because that's typically what they do to the opposition, is they just wear them down and then the floodgates open. But what I've seen from this Portugal side is that they continue to battle, they continue to fight, they keep things tight, they're incredibly disciplined. So I wouldn't be surprised if, if the U.S. does go ahead that it ends up being a narrow victory. See, that 68 consecutive games where they've scored, that Australia game, last time they were shut out, you're going back to 2017 for that. Long ways to go still. Yep. Lavelle, end line, cutting it back. Looked like a good ball. But Portugal was able to win it. They'll try to move it out. That was some skill on the ball from Norton, and now it's going to go out. Crystal Dunn pressured there. Sauron. Dahl Kemper. O'Hara.
Crystal Dunn. Easy to call that one. Jessica Silva knows. Yeah, she also knew that that was going to be a yellow card, I would have thought. <laughs> And she also knows that the two of these players are going to see a lot of each other in, in NWSL action. Just a two-handed grab there. Free kick, Rapino from long distance. An inviting ball in, Haran. The flag stayed down. was all set up for her. Yeah, it did look like a little distraction. Someone picked Lindsay Horan's marker. And a free look. Wide open. Jessica Silva, right side, done. Defending 1v1. Silva played for Lyon and Levante. Had some injuries at Lyon. Lavelle, cut off there by Costa. Norton, the 49th cap. She'll continue her run. Andrea Norton, one against three at the moment. Able to find the outlet. Portugal will push it back. It's better on the ball, though, from them. We didn't see that in the first half. Rebello. They've strung together a half dozen passes here. Norton draws the foul from Haran. Free kick, Portugal. And a warning for Haran. And really one of the first times we've seen Haram put a wrong foot forward tonight. She's been breaking up so many plays. This one a little eager, and that ball pops up and over her challenge. Amato on the right. Norton laid it off. Done. Becky Sauerbrunn, right in front of the bench, blocked. Lavelle picks it up. Horan trying to switch it. Kelly O'Hara. Well, the ball needed to be wider. Rapina was wide open. Going through the gap. Jessica Silva shanked that one off the foot. Goal kick, Nair. And it's a funny thing, JP, you can go back to that last attack of the United States, but the early ball by Lindsey Horan to open up the pitch that far side allowed Alex Morgan then to be in the spot that created a quick attack. The, the following ball was the one that broke down, but there's moments like that that bring that Lindsey Horan in that sixth position can bring to this United States team that maybe you don't get when Inertz is there. Lavelle finding Rapino at the end line. Megan played it across. And that's headed out for a corner. Portugal didn't want to risk anything there. Off Marshall. Let's see. Well, that's great. We can't clearly identify who that is. The play has been stopped. And it is Amado. 21-year-old right back. In the heat of Houston, any breaks like this are welcome. It's not an official hydration break, but you can see players partaking. And Amato appears to be okay.
Still scoreless here, 54th minute. Portugal has looked a little bit more comfortable on the ball anyway, this half. Rapino, double digits now for corners. It was 9-0 in the first half. That was intended for Mewis. O'Hara couldn't control it completely. Dal Kemper. That was last touched by Portugal, apparently, so it's a U.S. throw-in. A long throw-in. Not close enough. Second attempt for the U.S. Sent in! Oh. Not sure how that was missed. And her movement was so good. Alex Morgan's run in the box was brilliant, spot on, and the service to match. Everything was there, but the finishing touch. Look how she just peels away. She pulls that center back away, which created two options. Rose Lavelle in front of her, or Rapino goes with the longer option, and that's Alex Morgan sitting between the center back and the left back. Go with your head, nod that down, opts to lead with her foot, and makes that finish all the more difficult. Remains scoreless. Another potential good opportunity there for the U.S. Out shooting Portugal 15 to 2 in this one. Push forward by Nazare. Back to Nair. Given right back. Pushed up. Lost it. Mewis on the move. Megan Rapino. Into the middle. Mewis. That's deflected. Press looking to get to it. Beaten there by Amato, who clears. Sauron for Dunn. The pass to Mewis from Horan. Sam Mewis, left footed shot, missing far post. The chances are coming, though. They are, and. Should be one nothing right now for the U.S. with that last chance with Alex Morgan, but players are creating space individually. The one thing, this is a welcome challenge, by the way, for the United States. We know that we had typically historically have difficulty breaking down low blocks. I don't think that the U.S. wants to invite them to come out because I think the U.S. wants to work on this. One thing that coming into this match, Vlogmanovsky was looking forward to, to seeing the challenge of was a two front. Well, Portugal isn't playing in a two front. So what's the other thing that Portugal can pose a challenge for you in regards to preparing for the Olympics? It's a low block. And the United States right now struggling to figure out how to break it down or at least get that finishing touch. Foul on Portugal. Norton commits it. wanted to take a quick free kick but could not there play back instead now for Lindsay Horan Del Kemper right footed ball right corner Rapino it's deflected out for another corner for the U.S. And that is the ball that, and that I want to see more sophistication on for the United States. The initial ball from Dahl Kemper out to Rapino is spot on, but I want Rose Lavelle already knowing that service is coming with her surging in behind so she can get a one-time ball in behind from Rapino instead of Rapino laying that ball across. Then you have options for the cutback. I think that dynamicism of the team has been lacking a bit. Seventh U.S. corner. Rapino towards the middle. Headed down. And Costa is the first one on it. Picked off. Done. Turning quickly. 1v1 at the moment against Silva. U.S. will push it forward. That's denied as well. Costa's pass intercepted. Sauerbrunn with a nice move. But Portugal will get it back. Amado's pass. Carl Costa. Towards the middle. Marshall on the left. 
is a dangerous ball taken away. U.S. looking for a break here. There's Alex Morgan on the pick. Alex finding press, but the flag was up. The impact of the pandemic on youth sports has been significant, and while recovery has started in some communities, too many children in need are still on the sidelines. Visit goodsports.org to learn how you can help Fox Sports and Good Sports restore play for at-risk youth and the programs that serve them through donations of brand-new sports equipment. This was the offside play. We're going to see a change. Hachima Pinto will replace Nazare. So a little more experience. Hachima coming in. This is her 56th appearance for her country compared to Kika Nazareth's fourth appearance. And we didn't get to see Nazare impact the game. I thought that we might with how Jessica Silva was talking about her yesterday. Yeah, with the chemistry that those mm -hmm. two had, right? Yep. Kelly O'Hara with it. Getting close to that hour mark. Still nothing on the scoreboard. Swing and a miss on that tackle. Ball played across, but Herrera is there. Many streaks, right? The 15 straight home wins. That's after a 1 1 draw versus South Korea 2019. Last game as head coach for Jill Ellis, who we congratulate. President of the new San Diego team next year, NWSL. On this left side, maybe something here in the box. Silver shot. High. And it's deflected out. Portugal will have their first corner. And one of the first times that we've seen Jessica on this opposite side, sized up 1v1. We've seen her against Crystal Dunn. Well, now she's taking on Kelly O'Hara and twists her around and creates enough space to get that shot off. Totally against the run of play there. And that's what they're playing for. So first corner kick for Portugal. And Dolores Silva will take it. And it's straight up and out. So a wasted corner, and Nair will put it back into play. But so far, so good, I would think, for Francisco Neto, Portugal's head coach, with what he's seen from his team. of his better players, Anna Borges and Claudia Neto, were given time off, vacation time, after the long domestic season. So those two players are missing. And he said it was really the last opportunity to get some of these younger players experience against big teams as they head into qualification in September. Sam Ewis wide this time. That cross went wide. What do you want to see more now from this U.S. team, Allie? More precision in the attacking <laughs> third, more movement, more and, something else. Yeah, and, and, and also better decisions. So uh, this is all great. I do think Rapino could hit that ball first time. Then Sam Ewis is coming in and running at a defender. Take on that defender. Drive at her. Sam Hughes can play beautiful ball across. Absolutely, that one was not it. But I think go with the player 1v1 in the 18. Make them stop you or earn the foul, earn the PK, or play that cutback ball. There's just got to be more variety in the choice of the service in the 18. And then, of course, the execution has been not great tonight. Hughes towards Rapino at the end line. That cross headed down by Morgan, and then Lavelle tried to find... That ball off her left foot could not do it. Pinto. Norton was pushed back. Kept alive by Silva. 
And Jessica Silva draws the foul against Crystal Dunn. And JP, the reality is this is where you also miss a Lindsay Haran in more advanced areas. Her timing of when she arrives in the box to get on the end of service is, is spot on. She's not being able to do that because she's in the six role or occasionally you get a Julie Yurtz with those late runs out of midfield. So you're lacking that presence and timing. Flag is up. 64th minute. U.S. and Portugal with zeros on the board in this summer series. First of three games for the U.S. We'll take on Jamaica and then Nigeria. The Nigeria game will be in Austin, Texas. First game ever played in that brand new state-of-the-art venue. Home to Austin FC. Lavelle made that move but then lost the ball. And isolated. Even away, that looked like something that happened more in the first half. Portugal's been much better with the ball here in the second. They've seen more of it, but they've been better with it. Rubello to the right. We've seen some skill from Jessica <laughs> Silva. That time she thought she drew the foul, was not given one. Somewhat dangerous from Rose. All the way to the right, O'Hara. 65th minute, here comes Kelly O'Hara. Couple of Olympics, three World Cups for her. It'll bounce two to Pereira. And this is where the counter movement can come into play. You just see all the, the front line of the United States running back with the retreating back line of Portugal. The ball comes into that exact movement. Can you get someone to pop off that back line? Maybe this is an opportunity for you to insert someone in that front line that will check off. Maybe a Carly Lloyd type. Start to change the dynamics of that front three. The Haran pass finding Rose Lavelle. Short for press. Mewis try to free up for a touch from the right. Blocked off Haran. Sam Mewis stays with it. Good decision that time. Spreading it wide for Rapino. A deflected ball. Hit side netting. It's a U.S. corner. U.S. have players up scratching at least. You would think changes will come at some point. Not yet, though. In the 67th minute, Rapino is ready to strike, but not just yet. Referee Daniel Chesky's coming over to make sure things are okay inside that 18. Everyone is set. Rapino with the strike. Pereira got picked off, and that ball went wide. How did that miss? The U.S. stacked the six, put tons of traffic in front of Pereira. It looks like it was Morgan who nods that down. I just think she sees it late because you've got two players, Lindsay Rand, Sam Mewis, both rising up for it. And at the last second, Alex Morgan has eyes and just gets her body shape wrong. Well, not only is it tough for a goalkeeper to pick that out, but also I would pick a striker with all those bodies. Herrera down at the moment. Didn't see a signal if that was going to be a hydration break. Players are all over there. It could be just because of the injury. Herrera has done well tonight. She has. Made the big save on press, but she's not spilled chances, crosses, you know, balls that have been close to her. She's hung on to. Yeah, I mean, there was the one she parried away in that first half, but still kept it outside the frame of the yeah. goal. She's just a 22-year-old goalkeeper. And that's the thing about Portugal is that they don't necessarily commit resources to stop the service, but they defend their 18. So there's always going to be bodies in there battling for it. Well, the longer this goes at 0-0, the happier Francisco Neto should be about the way his team has hung in there. They're playing the number one team in the world. And granted, 
you could make the argument that the U.S. has not been efficient on their own, but still, the scoreboard's not lying at the moment. And one of the things he wanted to learn was what is the gap between our side and the U.S. team, who he called the top team in the world. I think we can all agree that's true. And the reality is there is a big gap, but they can compete. If, if you can stop them from scoring and you can take your chances on the other end, as few as they may be, you can sit pretty in a game like this. Arena. But then long off the left foot. Iran won that one in the air. Lewis. Lavelle going forward. Rose controlling. They blocked the angle to the sideline. Rose stays with it. Crystal Dunn. Farther back, Sauerbrunn. Dahlkemper. On that right sideline. Striven into the box. Not settled there. Portugal lost in the bad spot. Lavelle, turnaround shot, punched over by Pereira. Quality save. Lavelle almost made Portugal pay for that giveaway. And you said it earlier, Prayer is having herself a night. Poor turnover in the middle of the field and just a quick half turn by Rose Lavelle. That one off her right foot. 20 to 4 for the shots for the U.S. Without a goal yet. Rapino setting it in low. That's headed away. Collected. Dull Kemper. Wide on that right. Pushed back. O'Hara. Dal Kemper. Now Sauerbrunn. 71st minute. Still scoreless. United States and Portugal. Dal Kemper long in the box. Give it away. Horan missed it. She bent the ball wide of Pereira. So in the 71st minute, another quality chance. That time by Lindsey Horan. Goes by the boards. Hydration break is here, so we toss back to Rob in the studio. JP Alley, thank you. 67% of the possession for the U.S. The shot advantage now 20 to 4, but we're still at the 0 0 stalemate. Subs have to be coming at some point. Who's this game crying out for? Well, I think Carly Lloyd will be um, a good insertion into this game. I think if the U.S. is going to continue to press high, which they don't seem to be changing. Uh, they will win the ball high, and then there's no room to play behind them. Alex Morgan hasn't had it as many touches as she usually does. And Carly Lloyd is very good post-up play. She's great in the air for some of these corner kicks that they've been earning. So I think that she could be a, a good insertion in the game. And if you're trying to mirror a situation in a World Cup or an Olympics against this team, an inferior opponent you're going to come up against, uh, you make changes and you do what you can to get that win, that three points in a tournament situation. So there are options off the bench. They have to come in, and when they come in, make the uh, uh, you know make the uh, the change oh, that uh, Coach three wants. subs about to come. There we on, go. And there, there we is go. Number That's what 10. I'm talking about. You had your time. Next up. So Heather, you know Carly Lloyd. What do you think she's thinking in a moment like this? Zero zero seventy third minute. Well, I think she dreams of moments like these. She loves being the hero. I mean, and that's what great players are made of. Uh, you know, is she sitting on the bench, thrilled that it's nil-nil? She's probably eager to make her point. <laughs> so she's probably <laughs> eager to make her point that she should be starting and that, you know, she could change games like this. So three subs coming on. JP, Ali, we'll see how much it changes the face of this game. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. So we're not surprised, Ali, no. that changes are made right but three no not surprised three at once not yep. surprised it, i think this is all very well scripted i don't think getting a result tonight is is the important uh, piece of of the of the tr or the path to the olympics and it's about preparing and picking a squad and they're doing both they're trying to prepare they're trying to get their core players quality minutes and now it's also about checking and making sure that they're making the right decisions on some of the players that maybe are in the periphery or maybe are the first ones off the bench. 
Morgan, Rapino, and O'Hara are the ones that came out for Smith, Lloyd, and Sonnet. One of the great notes that we saw going through all the research was that Sophia Smith was four years old when Carly Lloyd made her national team debut. <laughs> We have the same birthday, by the way, Sophia Smith and I. 20 years apart. That's oh, I was gonna embarrassing. Say. Press. Thinking. Squaring. LaBelle. This time on the left foot. Kept it short. Mewis. Taken away. That took too long. Mewis. And whistle there. Gonna bring it back. 75th minute. Scoreless. Surprising score. I would think most people would agree with that from Houston. Del Kemper. Huge possession edge for the U.S. as expected. All the numbers in their favor except the one on the scoreboard, which is even. Knock it away by Silva. Nice job by Jessica Silva to keep it alive. Not to give it away for a throw. Sana. And Portugal has been defending the half space incredibly well. They get the first player on the, uh, the, the widest player of the United States, but they do have that cover coming over. Benjamin Haran getting closer. Did not draw the foul. Norton back the other way for Portugal. Laid off on the right side, but nobody's there. Jessica Silva, the closest one to it. She was about 10 yards away. Horan quickly, left side, press, cutting. On the right foot, now back on the left. Kristen Press is in deep. That's not the way. U.S. corner. Nice to see and hear fans again in the stadium. From that corner, it's the goal for Milos. First one, finally. It's not a short corner, it's direct to that near post. Gets right up and over the two near post defenders of Portugal, and then CMU just has to turn it in. No one on her. And even Pereira's backed herself all the way up into her goal. Even if she makes a play on that, it's still gonna be a goal for the United States. Great finish by CMU, and she looks shocked. I think that's the first corner that Press has taken, right? It Peter is. was taking all of them before that. Sometimes it's just a little change, and there was press in finding the target, and it's 1-0 U.S., and that goal-scoring streak now will continue. It was in jeopardy for a little while. No doubt. No doubts over here, yep. JP. No, no. <laughs> but it was in jeopardy the longer this thing went on. 78th minute now. That's how long it took. U.S. officially scoring in the 76th. Sam U.S. with the assist to Kristen Press. She's been now involved in 31 goals in her of the last 33 games she's played in. 13 goals, 18 assists. That's her 100th point for the U.S. 60 of them are goals. Norton. And interesting that she was the one in the front line that didn't come out. You didn't see... Any other changes, by the way, for Portugal? They only made the one earlier. Now it's another change. Crystal Dunn is going to be replaced by Tuna Davidson. And that should be a like-for-like -like swap. Davidson, a center back, can also play on the left side. And she shut down Jessica Silva. 
Wasn't a lot of attack from Portugal, but there were moments. So Tina Davidson plays for the Chicago Red Stars. Makes her appearance, her 30th international appearance for the U.S. U.S. with a one-goal lead. Sam U.S. tally. Lavelle. Did they make it two? Lavelle. Quick save again by Pereira. Norton. That's blocked. Pereira's been very good with the reflexes tonight. Nothing she could have done with the U.S. goal. Tackled away from Press, who recovers well. And lets it go out for a throw-in for the U.S. Games where you see a goalkeeper make two foot saves like she has made tonight. 80th minute, Davidson throw it. Mewis again. This one was wide, near side. Well, here's a look at the move from Rose Lavelle. Beats that first defender on a cutback, and now she's just driving with her left foot. Cuts across the front leg of the center back. Finds herself a window, but then ultimately strikes that right at Pereira. Another long clearance from Portugal, but it's going to be coming back at them. Smith laid it off on this right side. U.S. controlling it, Lavelle. As runners, has options, finding her oh. late. Big collision there. Foul the free kick is coming. Well, this is a hard challenge from Jessica Silva. Duran just gets there first. Free kick from outside the box. And this is a sweet distance to get this up and over the wall and dip it under the bar. Horans from about 25 yards out. Pretty much dead center. <laughs> On that whistle, Horan will strike. Horan with a shot. Right and goal. Save and a rebound. And a second goal. JP, you talked about it earlier, but it's to the wrong person. Carly Lloyd does exactly what she should do. She turns and frames the goal. After this ball leaves Lindsay Horan's foot, she is poaching, poaching, and finishing. And I think she's trying to send a message with this. You see me, right? <laughs> the 300 cap was against Sweden on April 10th. She'll be honored at the June 16th game in Austin. She honored us with her 125th of her brilliant international career. So now it's 2-0 and a change. Jessica Silva is out and replaced by 23 Tama and Karnasau. Silva might be a player based on what we've seen tonight that can have Kansas City fans in the NWSL excited. You can see the talent that she brings. on it, looking to break out. Portugal coming back. They've taken away the goal, apparently, while we were away on replay. Trying to get another look at some point as the offside flag goes up. I thought when I saw yeah. it on the replay that she was off, but assumed that there was no call. And I just assumed her timing was spot on, and she is she too off. eager, yep. She was off. So take back all of that. No 125th <laughs> goal. The other stuff is amazing from Carly Lloyd, but that one won't count. So it's still 1-0. U.S. But it's still good habits. Yep. 
And Aaron will feel better about that because that is one that she did spill. She's had a good game tonight. Very good game. If she was nervous, you couldn't tell. Down this left side. U.S. still in search of that killer goal to put it away for sure. doesn't work. Smith from the right, playing it across. And Herrera is there. 85th minute. One goal lead for the U.S. Again, this kind of result will play very well in Portugal. And we'll give this Team, some confidence, you would think. Like the U.S., they've not had much time to train together as a national team. NWSL, they had games last weekend, so U.S. not had much training here in Houston. Down that left side, flag. Was up. One zero. Carly Lloyd, one of four subs used by Blacko and Danofsky tonight. Subs came in after around 70 or so minutes. And he made three changes at once. And one of those, Tiana Davidson, has been bright since entering. Saw a glimpse at the range of pass that she has, and just in that last player, ability to cut through traffic. Amato, try to send it in, it's blocked. U.S. so good in the tight spaces. Haran, out wide to young Sophia Smith, who's just 20 years of age. And really starting to find her feet in NWSL. Nair, short pass ahead. Sauerberg from U.S. Sauerbrunn's on it again, and again, calmly goes back to Alyssa Nair. <laughs> Tierna Davidson. Press. It's knocked away. U.S. recovers. Davidson, out of Stanford University, played three years there. U.S. cutting ball in the middle. Rose Lavelle, left foot, playing it across. And for Lloyd, cleared, but given right back. Lindsey Horan, all the way to the right. Smith, and that goes right back to goal. experience for young Palela in goal against the number one team in the world. Only conceded once. Some nice saves on the night. Command of her area as well. Moran. Davidson. Running out on this game, 88th minute. Kristen Press tried to find Lloyd. That time might have been onside. Let's go back on the attack. U.S. coming back with numbers and model on the ball. Rebello. Costa. Picked off. Horan, immediate look up. Thought she saw someone open. It's given right back to Portugal. Yeah. 
Rebello. 108th appearance for a country. Diana Silva. Costa, that pass ahead. Marshall, Pinto. And the foul there. On Emily Sonic. going to be coming on, so Kristen Press doesn't get the full 90, but she lasted longer than any of the other boards on this team did. And she did well. And she started brightly. I don't think the front three had the best night. Final third production coming into this game, final third production, efficiency was something that this team wanted to focus in on and get right. I think they fell short. Look at where this room can grow, or this team can grow. It's in that area. Yeah, Silva kept that in. You've got Lynn Williams from the North Carolina Courage in. Let's see how much stoppage time is going to be put on the board. Allie, let's get some summation comments from you, the way this night went. Yeah, I just think the final third was what let the United States down, and, and that's always the last thing to come. That's always what we say in football, what we say in soccer, and as you near tournaments, you would expect the United States to be clicking better than they were in that final third. It was just an off night. But I did think they looked more stagnant than we're used to seeing in terms of the fluidity of the movement between players, amongst players. And even a small thing, a glimpse at looking at Rose Lavelle combining with CMU, essentially, that's a thing of beauty that we didn't see often enough tonight. So can the U.S. layer that in if they are struggling to, to connect in their, their cross and their finish? But the biggest piece is probably getting Lindsay Horan in that sixth spot, and I think she did the job. She did it well. She snuffed out the attack of Portugal when they did try to come out. And then you saw glimpses of her ability to open up the game in possession. I mentioned at the top, no Julie Ertz dealing with an MCL injury. They feel like she's making progress and on track to be available in the Olympic team. Everyone knows the value of Julie Ertz. Not just on the U.S. side, but other yeah. coaches. They always talk always. about Julie Ertz, right? Always. I mean, she's engraved in the starting lineup. And it's been that way for years. First one on the team sheet. Yeah, there are some that think she's the most valuable player on the team. I mean, you can make that debate. You can make that argument. So, Alicia Correa. Her number is up. Melissa Gomez is going to be coming in. Portugal did pretty well tonight in this heat and humidity of Houston, too, that they've had to deal with. They did, but to be fair, they kept the field small, right? They played in yep. half the size of the pitch and didn't extend any of their presses. is Militia Gomesh. Marshall comes out. And let's see, there should be one more change out there. Andrea Faria will also come in. She too from that championship side, Benfica. Diana Silva comes out. Four minutes in stoppage time. We're almost halfway to that on this goal kick from Pereira. will take on Jamaica, who earlier won tonight against Nigeria on a Denisha Blackwood goal. It was just a one nothing result. So we will see Jamaica late night, Sunday, in our next televised game for this U.S. Women's National Team. Gomes was trying to track that down, but Sonnet will have a throw in. You said it earlier. How good is it to hear fans and see fans in the stadium? Huge. I mean, because of COVID, it wasn't just the U.S. that didn't play in front of fans. Portugal women have not played in front of fans either. But the U.S. for sure misses them because of the great crowds and support that they've always got in the U.S. And slowly but surely, a lot of our stadiums across the country are opening up to full capacity in MLS, in the NWSL. And obviously for these national team games, it's great to get back somewhat closer to normal. Final minute, stoppage time. 
closer game than anyone would have predicted. The U.S. didn't score until 76 minutes from U.S. Up now for this one. Off the corner. Headed down. Off the post it looked like. Played across and then headed out. But Ada may have gotten a slight foot to it. Boy tried to play that ball. Back to goal. And now it's Portugal in the clearance. With seconds left. The Silva pass. Gomes. Made up by Smith. Here's Carly Lloyd. Lloyd into the box. Left side. Cutting it back. That's blocked. Past the four minutes of stoppage. We'll play no more. That's it. U.S. will get a one to nothing victory tonight. It was not an easy one, that's for sure. And they had a couple looks for, for goals, really. Carly Lloyd on the back post. And looks like Pereira has it covered. And she did, in fact. It was not off the post. Sam Mewis with the game's only goal. Kristen Press with the assist. The U.S. scored another one, but it was called back on an offside. It would have gone to Carly Lloyd. After the break, Rob, Alexi, and Heather will take you through the rest of the night.
Copa America begins Sunday. Brazil starts us off. Messi and Neymar in action throughout the tournament. That concludes July 10th, which is when our coverage of the CONCACAF Gold Cup begins. Lexi Lawless, Heather O'Reilly, Rob Stone back here with you. This one lopsided statistically everywhere except for the final score line in the end. The U.S. women able to extend their unbeaten streak to 40 straight games. They did it, though, by the slimmest of margins. Highlights from the second half, Rapino finding Alex Morgan. Rapino so good with her crosses from the left, from the right. This one perfectly placed on Alex Morgan's left foot. She scores that 10 times out of 10. That one was just a little bit off. Well, repeat. Megan Rapino right to Alex Morgan. Look, it's coming through a bunch of trees. She sees it at the last minute and can't find it. Hits it off his shoulder. Got some set pieces. Foreshadowing. A wise man once said, set pieces, set pieces, set pieces. Just get the ball in the box, especially when you have Sam Mewis, the tower of power in there. And that one was actually served in from Kristen Press to Sam Mewis, and they made that one look easy after making the game too difficult. Yeah, her 22nd international goal. Uh, the problems, though, for you, even though they had the shutout, was on the defensive side. I think that the tactics of their defending was actually incorrect this game. It was wrong, or it should have been changed mid-game. I think the U.S. has this attitude that they always need to press, that they always need to be smothering. And even myself, when I was a player, you like that confident feeling of being on the front foot. But I think against Portugal, actually the right decision would have been to drop back to midfield, to actually let Portugal get on the ball, to knock it around, to give them actually a false sense of confidence so they can uh, move up the field and then get a little bit stretched. That's when the runs would be available for Alex Morgan in behind. Well, as you said, I think that's difficult for great teams, and this is a great team despite this, uh, this result for them, uh, to pull back because you're acquiescing, uh, you are giving respect where you don't necessarily feel respect is due for a team that is going to sit in. I think for this team, it should have been no surprise that this Portugal team was going to sit in and cause, uh, cause problems. So you got to have the personnel out there and you have to have the tactical plan out there that finds a way to break it down. And yes, okay, the set pieces are, are, are a part of that plan, but Alex Morgan needs space, to, needs space to run in. That's not happening. So it would have been interesting if they did it, but it's, it's a very... It's a tricky and a difficult type of situation to ask this team to pull back and be, in a certain way, inferior in their posture. Well, if you're going to win the ball that high up on the pitch, which they did a lot of the game, you better have spot-on crosses. And their crosses were not good enough. Their execution in that final third was just not as clean and smooth as it usually is. In the end, though, the U.S., they go to 7-0-1 this calendar year. Still just one goal allowed. The 47th edition of the Copa America. Remind you, begins Sunday. Hope you join us. Host Brazil, led by Neymar, taking on Venezuela. And Joseph Martinez, that one live on Fox later in the evening. Here on FS1, Alex Morgan and the U.S. return to action as they host Jamaica, 10 p.m. Eastern. 16th shutout in the 19 matches under manager Vlatko Andonovsky. Sam Mewis, the lone finish as the women earn win number 537 for the program. The number one team in the world back in action Sunday night right here on FS1.